section. Amazon Elastic Block Store, or EBS for short, provides persistent block level storage volumes for use with Amazon EC2 instances in the AWS cloud. Each Amazon EBS volume is automatically replicated within its availability zone to protect you from component failure, to offer high availability and durability. So basically EBS is the disk volumes that you attach to your EC2 instance. You can create an EBS volume in the management console. When you create a new EBS volume, you need to define the region and the availability zone for it. You can also create new volumes through Amazon API or command line tools. The screen displays an example of creating a volume with the AWS CLI create volume command. Note that the size of the volume, availability zone, and the volume type is defined in the command. The region is assumed from the default settings of AWS CLI. You can also copy a volume to a different region using snapshots. One important point to be noted is that a first access penalty is attached to both Amazon EBS volumes and instant store volumes. This penalty can be a 5 to 50% reduction in performance on the first read or write. It is recommended that you warn the volume in order to eliminate this penalty from affecting production workloads, though this is not mandatory and in many cases may not be noticeable. Amazon EBS volumes can be stripped RAID 0 for performance or configured redundant storage RAID 1 by using RAID arrays. You can create RAID arrays by using the standard operating system tools. You already know you can back up the data on your EBS volumes to Amazon S3 by taking point in time snapshots. Initial snapshot of the root or boot volume must be consistent, so it is highly recommended to stop the instance before making the first snapshot or freeze the file system. Snapshot command runs and returns asynchronously and remains in a pending state until it is finished. You can watch the status of the snapshot in the AWS Management Console or through the API using AWS CLI tools. You can scale an Amazon EBS volume using snapshots. If you are performing the process on the root volume, be sure to stop the instance before detaching the original volume. Detach the original volume. If it is the root volume, then you will have to perform this action from the management console or from another Amazon EC2 instance that will continue running. Create a snapshot of the detached volume. Use the AWS EC2 create volume command to create a new volume. You can specify in the command that the volume will be created from the snapshot you previously took of the smaller or larger volume. Attach a new volume to the stopped EC2 instance and if you expand the root volume, restart the instance. Keep in mind the following points to help you better manage snapshots. Use automation to manage a large number of snapshots across a large fleet. Use CLI tools to automate creating and managing snapshots through Linux Shell and Windows Batch. Create backup commands using CLI and schedule them through Cron for Linux or Task Scheduler for Windows. Use services such as AWS Data Pipeline or Configuration Management Systems like Chef to set up scheduling tasks remotely. On this screen, CLI commands for three common snapshot management operations are displayed. Taking the snapshot, moving the snapshot across regions, and finding the snapshot ID and restore it to a new volume. The AWS CLI commands are self-explanatory. Note that it is always useful to pass a description for the newly created snapshot. Although snapshots are stored in Amazon S3, they are not directly accessible using the Amazon S3 utilities. You need to use the Amazon EBS tools to restore and manage snapshots. In this demonstration, we're going to take a quick look at EBS snapshots. So we'll start by going to Compute EC2 and we'll go to the volume section. Now here are the two volumes 
the root volumes that are attached to our Simply Learn web servers. So I've tagged them as Simply Learn Web Server 1 root and Web Server 2 root. So we can see what they are. Now to create a snapshot, it's very easy. We highlight the volume you want to take a snap of, click on Actions, and click on Create Snapshot. Then we get to give it a name. So Simply Learn Web Web Server 1 root snap, give it a description, snap of simply one web server root, and it's saying encrypted no, and that's because the root volume isn't encrypted. If this was an encrypted volume, then this would also be an encrypted snapshot. So we click on create. So snapshot creation started. So if we go to snapshots on the left hand side, we can see here that our snapshot has already been created. So that was a quick one. Now if you had a much larger volume, then it would take longer because remember it takes the snap and it copies the snapshot to Amazon S3. So that can sometimes take a while. So this is 100% available. So what can we do with this? Well. We can keep this for safekeeping and we could take a snapshot every night or every week of the web server so we can restore to a point in time. Or if we wanted to, we could create a volume from this particular snapshot. So we could say, yep, create a new snap. We could change the different volume types. So here we are, as we mentioned, here are the two different HDD options, which are new as of April 2016 and we can change the availability zone. So once you have the snap, you can do pretty much anything with it in your region. You can also create an AMI from your EBS snapshot. So you could create an image of it and you could use that to create a new instance if you wanted to. So that's a very brief overview of Amazon EBS snapshots. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.